my people, my people, yeah. Because I'm kidding, guys, I don't have a boyfriend. Hey, guys, in the front row, hello. <laughs> hey, boy band, hey. <laughs> hello, okay. <laughs> I will probably introduce myself, though. So, my name is Sakisa. Sakisa is a very unique name. It's a name that you're never going to hear of again. The reason why I have this unique name is because I'm also originally from Barbados. <laughs> But as you can tell, not unlike Nico, I do not have a Barbados accent. That's because I've been living here in the UK for a very long time, to the point where now I have got a British passport. <laughs> Just so I know, give me a chance if you've got a British passport. <laughs> give me a chance if you don't have a British passport. <laughs> happier people, happier people. Right? <laughs> Brexit is not working. Okay, cool. Uh, well, if anyone needs a British passport, I'm going to tell you how you get one. You've got to do this thing called a Life in the UK test. Anyone heard of it? Yes. If you haven't heard of it, please look online. It's a very bad pub quiz, okay? <laughs> because I attempted to do it four times, being originally from Barbados, and I failed it four times. And that's very interesting for me, because I'm an immigration lawyer. <laughs> That is my goddamn day job. So what I'm saying, guys, if anyone needs a British passport, come find me. I've got four more drawers that are 100 pounds each, okay? Because I'm a hustler, damn right, I'm a hustler. I definitely am a hustler. I live in South London. Any South Londoners in the room? I live in a place near Brixton. Everyone know Brixton? I love Brixton, mainly because I can get anything I want to in Brixton. Like, I can get my nails done, I can get my hair done, I can get my chicken, I can get my fruit and vegetables, I can get my phone fixed, I can see my cousin, all in one shop. All in one shop. <laughs> love Brixton. <laughs> my mum originally came to the UK in the 1980s and I said to her, what made you leave such a beautiful island in Barbados to come to the UK? And she said she came here to see the white people. <laughs> true story, true story. So my mom originally came here in the 1980s expecting to see white people, and bam, she landed in Brixton. She was like, what the hell is going on very different people, like my mum grew up in a very different age than I did, like well, I used to get spanked when I was a kid, loved it, still love it, hey. <laughs> We're just very different people, like my mum doesn't understand technology, like she's one of those women that will WhatsApp me and then call me straight after to let me know that she WhatsApp me. That's my mum. <laughs> Has that one here got a new passport when well, they got chip in it as well though? Yeah. Right, so I'm gonna tell you a story. So my mum, like I said, she doesn't understand technology. She's 62 years old. She joined Facebook last year, ruined 2019 for me. Because my mum doesn't understand that my Facebook wall can be seen by everyone. So she now uses my Facebook wall for family gossip. <laughs> the other day she was like, hi Sikisa, it's your mother here. I was like, mum, I know it's you. Your profile picture is me and you. I know it's you. She was like, hi Sakisa, it's your mother here. Your cousin Alex has got another baby father. I was like, ooh, Alex is gonna see this. <laughs> and we've got a family wedding on the weekend. It's been great gossip. <laughs> well, my mum doesn't understand hashtags, so afterwards she just wrote, God will judge. <laughs> we've got 120 likes, so she got the need to fuck her. All right. <laughs> Anyway, so we came back from Barbados, I put down my passport, border control, the scanner scan my face, the doors open, I walk straight through. My mum puts down her passport, border control, scanner scans her face, the doors are not opening. She tries to get in for like another five minutes, the doors are still not opening, and I'm like, can you just hurry up please, I've got a hundred bottles of rum in my suitcase, can you just hurry up please? <laughs> I just want to get through security. My dad's pissed off at this point, he's gone to get the suitcases. He's like, you've heard about Windrush? Fuck this shit. He's off, yeah? <laughs> Doesn't care if my mum gets into the country or not, yeah? <laughs> mum keeps trying his passport, still not working. The man comes over from Border Patrol, tries my mum's passport, scanner scans her face, doors are still not opening. I'm like, it's eight o'clock in the morning, I really just want a coffee. I've had a really long flight. Can we just get my mum through Border Patrol? The man turns over the passport and realises it's not my mum's passport. It's my passport. So I had 
said, use my mum's passport and put it down the scanner. The scanner has scanned my face, the door's open and I walk straight through. Apparently, I'm 62 years old. <laughs> so you can imagine I'm a bit sensitive about my age. <laughs> that old, I'm 32 years old and I'm living my best life. But all my, thank you, who's living their best life? <laughs> my best life. All my family are very desperate for me to have kids and get in a relationship. My nine year old cousin is the worst one. I love her to death, she's absolutely adorable. But we was at one particular family wedding and she kept going to me, why do you not have a boyfriend? You're over the age of 30. You should be married by now. You should be walking in that aisle. What's wrong with you? <laughs> And I was like, you're nine years old, where's your boyfriend? Why are you coming at me for? What's going on? What's the news? <laughs> and it was like 10.30 at night, and I had maybe like eight or nine bottles of Prosecco. So I was living my best life. Living my best life, yeah. And she kept going around in a circle going, you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a boyfriend. Oh my God. So I was like, you know what? I know how to handle you. So I was just like, you don't know your daddy. Fuck her. Fuck her. Fuck her. Don't mess with me, I'm from South London. Don't mess with me. I'm from South London. But I decided, I decided in 2020, I came off all the dating apps in 2020 because I had a day which I called Dick Pick Friday. <laughs> Which is exactly what it sounds like. I set up a profile match with this guy. I was like, hey, how are you doing? How's your day going? Dick pic. <laughs> okay, let's try someone else. Hey, what do you do for a living? Dick pic. I accumulated 25 dick pics in one day. And I don't understand the concept of dick pics, men. I don't know what you expect my response to be like. Dick pic? <gasps> for me? <gasps> And what you don't seem to understand is, when you send a dick pic, you don't just send me a dick pic. You send me and the close circle of friends I'm with a dick pic. We trade them like they're Pokemon cards. That's what we do. Some of the men are like, yeah, that's what happens, yeah, that's what happens. Whenever I do get a sent a dick pic, I just send them one back. <laughs> like, can you tell if this is your dick? Like it's, like it's a please line up of dicks. Like I'm the Oprah of dick pics. Just dick it for you, dick it for you, dick it for you. I don't, I'm very open for your day. Like I like white people, you lot are cool. Um, you're cool. I even got myself a North Face jacket, so one of you now, one of you. I decided though, in 2020, that I was going to write a book about how white guys should date black girls. The reason why I decided to do this, so I was dating this guy, and we were making out on his sofa, and he said to me, can I touch your hair? Now, I didn't know there was an aura of racism around my hair, also didn't know that was a fetish, yeah. So I thought about it for a minute, and I was like, yeah, you can touch my hair. So I just took it off and left it with him. You can't touch your hair. You can your hair. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Yeah.